forgive me for asking you to retell a story you've probably told a thousand times, but there's some famous bet you made. Was it with Preskill, with some, some other physicist? Pre- Pre- Preskill and, and Hawking. And, and Stephen Hawking. Uh, by the way, I was at the University of Texas when Preskill was there. I think he was like a postdoc or something. He was some, it was just starting out. That's how old I am. I'm an old guy. I'm an old guy. <laughs> you're, you're a young kid. I'm an old man. You're a young kid. Uh, so uh, you made a bet. And let me see if I can set the table here. A, a black hole, once we all agree that they exist, we can ask other questions. When you have something outside the black hole and it falls in, what happens to that information that was contained in that object? Is it gone forever? And is that okay? Uh, because information theory was a whole branch of science, shall I call it science, that was rising up at around the same time. And, and entropy um, became a, a buzzword among many. So what was the bet and how did it, and how was it ultimately resolved? So the bet was between Stephen Hawking and me on one side, and John Preskill on the other side. It was over whether or not information does get lost in black holes. The background of and the, why is that so bad? Okay, so it's it's <laughs> it's bad because uh, the fundamental laws of quantum mechanics, as they are normally formulated, physicists are widely agreed that quantum physics is fundamental, uh, and that. Quantum physics underlies all of physics. It's the most successful theory ever put forth right. and, of the universe. And classical physics, where there are not these quantum fluctuations, there are not these probabilities, that arises from quantum physics as an approximation under ordinary everyday circumstances. There are many people who caricature science, physics in particular, by saying... Well, we used to think qua- classical physics was it, but now we discard it in favor of quantum physics. But that's not true. No, quantum physics absorbed, yeah. uh, a- as well as relativity, general relativity, absorbing Newtonian gravity. Yeah. It, it doesn't, it's not discarded. It's a bigger understanding, a deeper that's understanding. Right. And, okay. Just want to emphasize that. That's right. Many people right. get that yeah. confused. And so quantum physics is normally formulated. Is, unif- is almost universally uh, viewed, uh, has built right into it from the very beginning uh, a, the fact that information cannot be lost. Now, these words, information cannot be lost, are a translation into everyday language of something else, which is not everyday language, which says that uh, the evolution of everything in the universe is unitary. And uh, so those those are buzzwords that are not part of the normal lexicon. But I I want to to say, just to say that, to indicate that there's some very, very extremely precise version of this, of which information is being lost, is a colloquial way of saying it. Okay. Okay. But it would represent a violation of some fundamental tenets of quantum theory. That's right. Stephen Hawking, back... When he was visiting Caltech. Who, by the way, we've interviewed for Star Talk in our archives. Check it out. In 1974, 70, 74, 75, he spent a year in my research group at Caltech. We were very close friends. And uh, he, during that period, he having discovered something called Hawking radiation, which uh, is a, a very slow evaporation of a black hole. It emits radiation and slowly evaporates. Uh, he then, while he was here, uh, began to look much more deeply at quantum theory and black holes. And he came up with a prediction that information really is lost. And uh, when black holes evaporate, you could form a black hole. Uh, it, if you waited long enough, much longer than the age of the universe for normal black holes, uh, the black hole would evaporate and all the information that went into the black hole would be gone. The black hole would be gone. You just simply lost the information that no longer is there. And that was complete violation of the normal tenets of quantum mechanics. And yet he was claiming that that was true. He, he wrote a paper on this with all the technical details. He couldn't get it published. 
because it was it was so obvious it had to be wrong, but nobody could see anything wrong in his calculation. And so he had to fight for more than a year to get it published. If you look at this pa public pa paper, you see the submission date. As all research papers give you. Yes. Yeah, they give you a submission date, and then you usually have a revised date, and then it's published. There's no revised date. There's a submission <laughs> date, and the publication date is something like nearly a year and a half later. Mm. He fought for, for a whole year, uh, more than a year, to get this thing published. And physicists struggled with this ever since. Uh, so uh, those of us whose roots are in relativity tended to believe Hawking. <laughs> and those of us whose roots were in, who grew up uh, with quantum mechanics instead of relativity first, those of us who were enamored of relativity tended to believe Hawking. And so Hawking and I made this bet with Preskill, whose roots were in uh, in, in quantum physics. And he's the junior of you both, right? He's, he's the junior young of us both. He, coming he, up. He, is, he is now the Richard P. Feynman Professor of Theoretical Physics at Caltech. <laughs> I'm the Richard P. Feynman Physic Professor of Theoretical Physics Emeritus. Emeritus. Okay, them young whippersnappers. Oh, man, they'll take your job uh, in so a I, minute. So I just I <laughs> turned the chair over to, to John. I, I mean, John is brilliant. He's a hell of a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> a hell of a lot smarter. Anyway, so... So we made this bet, and uh, uh, this was in a period when Hawking was starting to visit Caltech uh, for uh, typically three to six weeks every year. Was he yet wheelchair bound? Uh, oh yeah, he'd been wheel. He was wheelchair bound, uh, going way back at, at, to about 1970. Okay, and, uh, mm -hmm. and this is 1990. Oh, oh, much so later. Okay, is, mm -hmm. uh, we made the bet around 1990. So the stage is set. Okay, the cage match is set. You and Stephen Hawking, titans in your field, in your subject, conclude, yeah, information is lost. But especially if Hawking radiation, you can evaporate the black hole and everything is gone. There's no, there's no memory of what was there. Preskill is declaring that information is not lost and his roots are deep in quantum physics, which we know has never been shown to be wrong. And they're both smarter than I am. Okay. And they both know a lot more about quantum physics than I do. Mm -hmm. Because we'll return to this, but let me just explain that I, through my whole career, I've thought that the quantum gravity, com combining general relativity with uh, quantum th physics, was the most important area of physics of all. But I also made a decision when I was very young, I will never work in quantum gravity because the field is too crowded. There are too many smart people there. <laughs> I, I will, I will pick, I, I'm smart enough to pick really important problems that I can solve uh, that nobody else is working on. And, and they'll only, they'll only figure out later that I'm right, that, it's, that, 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 that those problems are important, but I won't touch a problem, a problem where everybody's well, got a million working. people in the They're room. Just, just too, too many smart people. Too many people smart people in the room. room. So anyway, so, so they, they have now agreed that information is not lost. So Hawking conceded, and, and by association with you, or, or have you still a holdout on this? No, I'm still a holdout. Okay. And, the, and, and, and what led to this concession, if I understand correctly? So he, Stephen, together with a student, was working on a, a idea for how the information might be uh, recovered. And he basically uh, said that... Uh, in quantum physics, if you form a black hole and then it evaporates, there's also a, a tiny probability the black hole never formed in the first place and the information sneaks out through the root where it didn't form in the first place. And, uh, and I'm sorry, that sounds like a cop-out. Yeah, well, it does sound like a cop-out, <laughs> but it's, it's, very, it's very clever and it's in keeping with how physics works. But it's not obvious that it's right. But it's it's, it's conceivable that this is this is this is what, what about happened. the idea? So maybe I've misunderstood. So I got to go back to see where I've said this even publicly. I thought as the black black hole evaporates because the energy, the gravitational energy in the vicinity of a black hole can spontaneously make a pair of particles, and one particle escapes, the other one falls into the black hole, and this just keeps going until there's no black hole left. But the particle that escapes, if you inventory those particles, they're real particles. And 
don't you recover all the particles that went in in the first place? Well, you recover all the energy. But they don't recover but not the, the same, inventory of particles, you the quarks. Get, you and don't the, get the same particles how do you, necessarily. How do you, I, okay, then I misunderstood that. I, I, I've been wrong. I think I've, I've been wrong. I thought you get particle for particle, they come out, which blew my mind. Uh, I don't think, uh, there's, certainly there's no proof that that's the case. Well, of course, we, we certainly no proof that that's the case. And I, and, I don't, and, I, and, I don't, and I don't think it is the okay. case. Okay, okay. Uh, but Okay, so, so you guys lost the bet. Well, no, I... No. Okay, oh, Hawking Haw concedes Haw the bet. Hawking con concedes the bet. And what was at stake for this? Uh, the loser will give the winner an encyclopedia filled with information that... Uh, <laughs> that uh, uh,